Well, here we are again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a uh, small tutorial on how I blend uh, the colors that I use uh, to give detail to my uh, my roses because you've been asking me the questions and of course I love to share with you all the information but let me tell you today has been one of those days you know when you wake up in the morning and you say oh shoot here we go again well yes it's been one of those days but we must continue with the tradition and do what we have to do so here we go uh, oh yeah you've been asking me hey how come there's so many pumpkins in your house well I don't know hell I mean I like them what's not to love I love pumpkins they're just gorgeous but anyway um, here you have the I, I, I don't I don't use those palettes with all those holes and all that stupidity I just grab a, I go to uh, vintage shops and I just buy myself a whole bunch of used saucers and plates and uh, easier to handle and prettier of course but anyway um, see this that is pure pigment and these are watercolors and acrylics and etc colors that I love uh, but I don't use, use the colors as they come right off the container uh, I add a small amount of the dry pigment which is pure pigment and I select a bright color as my main attraction and from then I select a medium and a dark and what I do I I just once I have my details going on I just come oh my god working the camera I forgot to tell you this working the camera and trying to work <laughs> no wonder those camera men charge so much money it's it's unbearable I mean look dip just enough so you collect a small amount but don't blend it just keep it light and airy and what you do simply look at your work and begin to add little layers at a time as you go don't collect too much information don't pick too much information meaning don't load your brush uh, too much and and remember the little edges which they would tell you it's a light it's a light uh, falling right on that tiny little uh, edge and just blend blend and blend and blend that's the secret you are always wondering how do you make it so smooth how do you make it so even how do blending ever heard of that blending well that's what I do um, again pick a bit a bit of color come again and continue I cannot work and film myself I don't know how people do those videos you know <laughs> I can't look at me absolutely an amateur at this but here you have it see how I begin to give depth and texture to the flower little bit a little bit at a time when you collect too much material in your brush you're transferring that glove to your work and it's going to be harder for you to distribute so a little bit of dabbing and a little bit of color and working in areas i don't go all over the place like a chicken with my hair cut off just concentrate on a small area and once you are satisfied with how it's coming along then move to the next and so on 
See? So, I use uh, a pigment, which is pure pigment, the liquid colors. I select a light, a medium, and a dark, plus a small amount of the dried pigment, the pure pigment. And that's how I blend and blend and do my texturing. When you look at watercolors, mostly watercolors look like they've been cut in the rain, and I don't like that. I don't like nothing runny or messy or drippy. I like everything very controlled and clean and tight and nice. I don't like things, you know, this is not a majority piece. I don't want things dripping and, and, and falling everywhere. That's the reason why I work pretty dry in my watercolors. I don't like all that slush, all that mess. I hope you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. I always ask myself that question. Oh, and what in the subject of questions? I get a lot of letters and, and messages asking me, how does it feel to be so talented? Well, you don't know. What the hell do I know? It's just what it is. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. That's what it feels like. You just do what you have to do. You're an artist, you paint, you draw. You're an actor, you act. You're a politician, you bullshit people. That's just the way it is, you know? Okay, I'm going to go ahead now and come to the graphite part. See the graphite blend that I created? Let me make this, move this dim tulip out of the way. See it? Okay, I created these blends for myself. And I'm going to be selling them, of course, because they're just fabulous. And not because I made them, just because they are. Um, the face is on the very beginning stages of creation. So uh, remember what I told you. If you're going to start shading an area, you select the darkest and from then move forward and around. Don't, you have to remember the light. That is the key. You have to remember where the light is coming from. And the light is coming, judging from the shadows on her nose and the lashes on the, on the skin. The light is coming from above, right on top. So that means that everywhere there is volume, light is going to be featured more prominently. You see what I'm saying to you? So if you keep that in mind, you will have no problem relating to the drawing. I come to, I used to call it a crack, but it's actually, <laughs> it's actually a crease. <laughs> I come to the crease of the eyelid, blend, softly and start to move my brush away towards the back and up to the eyebrow. This tells you that it's in, out, in. See what I mean? In, out, in. Then I do the same up here. Blend, blend, and diffuse as you work yourself towards the light. Step back, take a look, and add another application. See? Of course this would be much easier if I was working flat on my table, but in order for me to uh, demonstrate what I'm doing, I have to do it standing up, and that means that most of the powder falls right off the map, but it's okay. We're a bunch of uh, bright, 
talented artists. I know you can you you can understand what I'm trying to do here. Okay. See that? That is absolutely gorgeous. I love how the eyelid pops out. It's just stunning. Now, you're going to connect the hair to the side of the face. So what you do to the temple. So what you do, you begin at the darkest area and start to bring it out right there you're making a connection you see right there you're already connected and see how much I blend before I pack my brush again I blend and blend and blend and blend and blend and blend and continue blending and blending until all my uh, material is grinded into the surface of the board. See? Then I pack again. And begin to move my way out and onto the skin. You see? There is no secret to this. I cannot teach you how to draw. I cannot teach you how to uh, create out of your own uh, mind. You, the only person that can teach yourself how to draw is you. And that comes with practice. The only thing that I can pass on to you are my techniques. My techniques on how I do my work. How do I make things happen? I can teach you that, but I cannot teach you. You ask me, hey, can you? No, I can't. I cannot. No one can, actually. Nobody can teach you how to draw. That is something that you have to work yourself hard at it and, and you know, practice. That's the word. I know it sounds boring and stupid, but that's just the way practice. So don't be sending me letters and questions. Okay, no, I cannot teach you how to draw. The only thing that I'm here to do is to pass on my techniques onto you. That will make you a better artist. And on that you have my word, but I cannot teach you how to draw. Okay, you got that now, I think? Again, blend, blend, and you have to follow the flow of the hair. You cannot be all over the place like a chicken with a hair cut off. You have to concentrate. You have a pattern before you that you must follow, you know, and that's what you have to do. there anyway I think you got the idea as far as that now I'm going to use real quick where's that brush okay I'm going to use the texture which is the mixture for highlighting and texture that I do to demonstrate to you how I apply it. Those are the, the, the lashes falling onto the skin and they're already blocked in but you have to open those shadows up. You have to go in. Right now it's just a solid black. So you have to go in and let people know 
the these are shadows. You see that? You have to let them know that these are shadows falling not just a big old flop just sitting there and what happens is the moment that you begin to enter into the darkness the actual solid piece that creates the cast comes out see Let me brush that off to put that little debris out. Do you see what I mean? See? And the more that you apply and the more that you work on, the more that the piece will come to life. But anyway, I have a client coming tomorrow, which is a, she is a really good client of mine that has purchased quite a few pieces and she's coming tomorrow to to take a look at this mail and she saw it on my Facebook and just you know she screamed understandably so because this is stunning this is going to be this is going to be an absolute masterpiece of that there's no no question but anyway I'm going to go ahead now and sign off and start working on it and I will post pictures of the progress. I have to work on the hair and, and fluff it up and bitch it a little bit. I know what she likes. So until then, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's all I can say. I really appreciate all your comments and, and keep it coming. Bye-bye.